Hey everyone, welcome to the Crazy Desert Knitting channel. This channel focuses on knitting, crocheting, and other yarn related topics. I am Mel, the Crazy Desert Knitter, coming to you from the sunny city of Phoenix, Arizona. To all my new viewers, welcome to the Crazy Desert Knitting family. To all my returning viewers, welcome back to the Crazy Desert Knitting family. I am so excited you guys are here with me today. Today I'm going to be doing a yarn review, and my yarn review is going to be on Paint Box Yarns Cotton Erin. Now, Cotton Erin is a 100% cotton yarn. And it is very similar to the 100% Cotton DK review that I did about two or three months ago now. So this is just Erin Waite. Uh, today I will be reviewing the basics of this yarn. I will also be reviewing my thoughts as well as some products that I would use it for and other substitutes that are out there for this yarn. So if you guys are interested, I paid for this out of my own money. It is not sponsored. It is not affiliated. It was not provided to me. So it's all my own thoughts and opinions um, concerning paint box. What is it? Paint box yarns, cotton, Erin. So if you guys would like to join me over at my desk, we will get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with some basics. This is paint box yarns, cotton, Erin. This is 100% cotton. It comes in a 50 gram or 1.72 ounce ball. It has 93 yards or 85 meters as part of that ball. They classify it as a medium four weight yarn. And I would agree that is a medium four weight yarn. So there you go. Um, <laughs> it calls for a 4.5 millimeter hook or needle. Now a needle that is US seven and for hook size, I'm sorry, I don't know what that is in the U.S. hook size. These two gauge swatches, you'll see a knitting gauge swatch as well as a crocheted gauge swatch, were done at a one size larger than what the ball band called for. I knit and crochet very tight, so to make gauge normally, I go up one needle size. Now, gauge calls for knitting is 20 stitches by 24 rows. If this was blocked, I would come out pretty close to perfect. Again, this is crocheted, and I do know crochet gauge is different. However, it doesn't really tell me what that's supposed to be on the back here. Um, so, sorry. <laughs> However, that's all I have to go with. <laughs> it does come in approximately 50 plus colors, and those are 50 plus solid colors. I really love a yarn that has a lot of colors in it which is really nice. And this ball costs approximately $3 a ball. It also comes in a pack of five or a pack of 10 in case you need it. There are every once in a while mixed packs, just so you are aware as well. Okay, so that's the basic information. Let's go ahead and move on to the care instructions. Now it does say it is machine washable and I've proven that. It does say do not tumble dry. It does say do not bleach. Obviously the bleach makes sense because you don't want to lose your color. However, I went ahead and tossed mine in the dryer. So I washed and dried the swatch. They are not blocked, but they are, this one is washed and dried. And I did not have a problem with it. Obviously, if you stretch it out a little bit, drying it's going to shrink it back up. It is cotton, just letting you know. Cotton does shrink slightly. If you are using this yarn for something like a sweater or something along those lines, I would lay it flat to dry. However, if you're using it for something else, like a dishcloth, go ahead and toss it in the dryer, if you so choose. Okay, so there's that. Um, again, I dried mine. So what are my personal thoughts on this one? Biggest thing is color stay for me when it comes to cotton yarns. For some reason, I find that cotton yarns lose their color a little bit easier than acrylics or wools. I don't really understand why. However, the you can see this one is unwashed. This one has been washed and dried in the dryer, in the washing machine in the dryer. I don't see a ton of color difference between those. I do see a little bit of color loss, but that is anticipated with any first washing of any yarn. However, it's not significant. So comparison wise, there you guys go. <laughs> so I find the twist on the yarn, again, I'll a little swatch here for you guys to see is pretty good 
However, when I crochet, and this comes to me no matter what yarn I use, I do wind up untwisting it just a little bit. Uh, so if that happens to you with all yarns, it's going to happen to you with this one. If it doesn't happen to you with all yarns, it won't happen with this one. I did not have the same problem when I knit with it as I do when I crochet with it. And that has to do with how I wrap my yarn around my fingers to get my tension right. Um, just so you guys are aware. But I don't want to hold anything back. <laughs> so there is that. So um, I believe it actually has pretty good stitch definition. And some of that is due to the twist. Again, not a high twist yarn, but an average twist, I would call it. This is the stitch definition for the cotton, for the knitting. And this is the stitch definition. I'll pull it up just a little bit more for you guys to see. Sorry for the dog in the background. Is for crochet. And yes, that's various crochet stitches. I don't think I did single crochet all the way across. Hmm, maybe I did. Never mind, I did do single crochet. So there is that. Um, would I use this again? Yes, I would use it again depending on what I wanted, depending on what I was making. So obviously. So uses. Um, the most prominent use I would have for this would be a washcloth, a dish towel, something like that. Uh, some sort of a mat or rug for inside or outside, whether it be a bathroom rug or an outdoor rug. Anything that you need to dry easily and quickly. Good for a cotton yarn. You can use this for outer garments. I would not want to put this, you know, directly on top of my skin, me personally. It's definitely, you know, you guys think of a dishcloth. That's kind of what I would use it for. That, that would be my prominent use. Let's put it that way. So if you guys wouldn't you put your dishcloth and stuff like that against your skin to wear it as a shirt, I wouldn't make a garment that goes next to your skin with this. However, I do believe that it would work really well for something like a little sweater jacket or something like that. Anything that's not going to be directly against your skin all the time. So comparable yarns to this, I would say Sugar and Cream is a good comparable. Barocco Cotton, I believe I'm pronouncing that right, would be a good comparable, as well as Knit Picks Dishy. All would be a great comparable yarn. Also, if you were looking at Paint Box 100% Cotton DK, that's comparable to this, but obviously it's a DK weight, not an Aran weight. Those are the three, com those are the main comparables that I would use. So there is that. So, all right, so I've gone over some of the basics, the care instructions, my personal thoughts, uses and comparable yarns and or substitute yarns. <laughs> If you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave me a comment in the comment boxes or send me a question. Uh, if you have one are looking for any of the links or things like that that I talked about, go ahead and check out that description box below. Let's be honest, there's not going to be much down there. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please click that subscribe button down there as well. And until next time, this is Mel, the Crazy Desert Knitter, saying just keep knitting everyone. Bye.